Hi, this is Charles Sterling from Sterling Power Products. This is probably going to be our most contentious, um, argued about video that we've ever done. This has taken us um, six to seven months to do. This wasn't done overnight. Everything's data log that we have here. But basically what this is about is um, battery performance, uh, different types of batteries, different chemistries, the lead acid AGM, lead crystal and lithium. And what we're trying to show is, is lithium good value? Um, and that can be interpreted many ways, but we need to start out by cycles. Now, if you go to any battery manufacturer and say, how many cycles will your battery do? You will get the biggest load of nonsense on the planet. They'll say, this is the number of cycles. That is a ridiculous figure because if the cycles aren't linked to how deep was the discharge, how fast was the recharge, and what voltages etc were used, in other words the C rating of the battery, the figures are meaningless. There's no point taking a car starter battery and saying the cycle on this is um, 5,000 cycles, which it is. If you start your car with it, stop your car, start your car, it'll do 5,000 cycles, not unrealistically. But that's not the question that we would be interested in uh, when you're talking about auxiliary battery systems for boats or vehicles or camper vans where you're using the battery outside the performance that it was designed to do. Make no mistake about it, that's what you're doing. So to get the figures for the performance of a starter battery is complete nonsense when you stick it onto a vehicle or a boat. Now on top of that, it gets worse as they say, um, it's all down to your depth of discharge, your recharge, now, you're not going to get these figures from the um, battery manufacturers, mostly because they're way too embarrassing and, um, you know, they will be misinterpreted by people. So what we have done is come up with a cycle. Now, we've called it the Sterling cycle. and I can't emphasize this enough. This is the wrong way to use your batteries. Having said that, there's a lot of batteries out there being used like this. So we wanted a nasty cycle for two reasons. One, to speed the process up and two, just to show people really you know, what can happen if you're not good with your batteries. Now, if you want to look after your batteries, you don't want to discharge them this far. So you'd put on something like our latching relay, which will you can program it to prevent it going down this low. And that will save you a hell of a lot of money, but people sort of don't tend to use this. But what you want is a, a voltage sensor relay that only allows your batteries to go down to say 11 volts or 11.5 volts and then switches you off until you recharge them. Trust me, this will, that would save you an absolute fortune when it comes to batteries. But we're not, this is not about how to make your batteries last longer. This is not what this video is about and I can't emphasize this enough. This has been nasty to batteries. Now, basically the cycle we have done, call it the Sterling cycle, is we have discharged the battery down to about 10.5 volts. In other words, you switch an inverter on, you use the inverter, when the inverter hits 10.5 volts, the inverter stops working and then you charge your batteries up again. That's what a lot of people do. Make no mistake, a lot of people run their batteries like this, so it's not an unrealistic test by any stretch of the imagination. It's just a nasty one. Um, and then on top of that, we wanted a datum where we're treating all the battery types exactly the same. We're not picking one out and giving it a harder time. So what we've done is got a model airplane charger and it will charge at 20 amps and then it also will discharge at 20 amps or 25 amps, whatever it is. Uh, and it'll also measure the amp hours going in and the amp hours coming out of the battery. Now the different types of battery, we put this on and basically walk away from it. So it'll just charge at 20 amps, discharge at 20 amps, blah, 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 until it's buggered. That's, that's the bottom line here. And it's a nasty thing. And when, as I said, a dozen times, this is not the way you should run your batteries, but people do. So all we're after is a datum point that says, um, this one does this, this one does this, this one does this, and you're paying twice as much for this battery, are you getting twice the performance? You're paying 10 times more for this battery, are you getting 10 times more performance? That's what we're trying to prove. The, this data would be aimed at someone like, for example, say you were um, a large company that had a fleet of vans and you had an inverter in the back of the van and after three months your inverters were, your batteries were being destroyed. Um, and you're going, well, what, why, well, why would it do this? And you find out the guys are just switching the inverter on, boiling kettles, 
whatever they're doing, dropping the battery down, charging it back up again, doing nothing from their point of view wrong, but because you don't have any low voltage protection in, this cycle is going to happen, then you can either say, okay, that battery lasted me, or that type of battery lasted for five months. If I use another type, will I get three times more out of that battery? So it's about it's about a data reference point this is all about. So anyway, let's get to the, the this is the test information here. I'll take you next door now to show you the uh, test results. So really what we're doing is comparing 100 pound cheap lead acid battery against an AGM, sort of 300 pounds against a 400 pound lead crystal against a lithium and seeing whether um, the lithium is good value or whether, you know, don't touch it with a barge pole. So let's go next door and we'll show you the test setup and then we'll run through the test results. I can assure you the tests are, would come under the heading of shocking is the only way. So keep tuned because um, it's, uh, you're going to find this very interesting and uh, quite shocking. Okay, uh, I'll take this next door and I'll show you what the actual test was before we go through the uh, data. All right, this is part two. Um, here we have our test room to give you an idea of what we have been doing. These are two of the batteries. The left one is obviously the lithium. The right one, I'm not going to mention what one that is. And then basically what we have here, this is the piece of equipment which charges and discharges and logs the uh, information and over a period of time that's where we uh, will make the graph from. So the state of logging is also charging and discharging and we can do two batteries at the same time. Now bear in mind this one here for example has been on now for nearly six months so hence the why we're finishing the test because quite frankly fed up with it. Um, but the information is still there and um, we'll go on to the third phase. Okay. Okay, this is the results, or call it part three of the um, the video. Now, as I said before, this has taken nearly six months to do. Uh, we have everything data logged, so all the information is there. We didn't like make anything up. The reason it took so long was because the lithium performed so well that it, you know, it just took longer to do it. So let's um, break down all this information. So here we have the low cost lead acid, so-called marine leisure, domestic, whatever you want to call it. They're basically starter batteries, no matter what anybody tells you. They're starter batteries with sticky labels on the front. Um, that's those. Then we have the slightly, so this is sort of your 80, 100 pound battery. Then you're onto the AGM, which is a sort of 300 pound battery. These are the lead crystal, which is your sort of 350, 400 pounds. And then this is the lithium at, say, a thousand pounds. So really what we're trying to show here is um, it's all about proportions. It's not about, as I said many times before, this is so not the way you should be treating batteries, but a lot of batteries um, in the field are treated like this. So to say this is an unrealistic cycle would be absolutely nonsense. There's a lot of vehicles, there's a lot of people out there on hire boats running batteries exactly like this. So it's not an unrealistic world test. So let's pick a sort of, let's pick a datum point for lack of a better term. So let's say, what do you call your batteries that you would say are defective? Would you say if there's, um, if they're down by 50%, are they defective? If they're down to 30%, are they defective? That's a call you would have to make. But just for the ease of this graph, let's just pick 50%. Um, and uh, we'll work with that. So there is the, you know, so 50%. Now bear in mind, this was probably, this is a 90 amp hour battery. This is a, supposed to have been, um, I think a 90 amp hour one. That was supposed to be 100, and this one was supposed to be 100. It was actually doing 115 or 16 or so. So let's just pick a datum and uh, see whether we can prove that Although a lithium battery is, say, 10 times more expensive than your lead acid or your cheap lead acid, is it 10 times better? That's really what this is all about. So if we were to pick now, let's just see, just to make it easy, there's 35%. So if we say 35% is your battery scrap. So you bought a 100 amp hour battery, you've only got 30 amp hours in it. How many cycles do you get before you call it scrap? 
Now, you're 30, at 35%, your normal local lead acid did less than 20 cycles. You know, so literally within a month, you can destroy those batteries down to 35%. And make no mistake, that does happen. Now, let's say this is 100 pounds for the sake of argument. So, you're going to pay three times more for your AGM. So is your AGM going to last you three times longer? So let's go along here. So they're going to about 170 cycles before they're down to 35%. Now as you can see, if you change this definition, all this is going to change. So if they're three times more, then absolutely you're getting a lot more performance out of your AGM one than your low-cost domestic um, lead acid battery. Uh, lead crystal was more expensive. Now, I'd never really done lead crystal before, so it was interesting to see it was doing better, and then for some reason here, it fell off a cliff. I don't know why. Um, I can't answer that. Uh, it just it did. Um, so, it didn't come out of the test very well at all. It was doing well, and then died. Now, the lithium, which was it's one of our batteries, it's sold as a 100 amp hour battery, um, plus or minus, I think it's about 10%. Well, this one actually did 117 amps. These little glitches are where it does a bit of battery balancing going on inside. Um, so it's classified as 100 amp, and it dropped by 1 amp, which was actually doing 117 amps, or 18 amps, and it dropped by 1 amp. So is the lithium performance 10 times better than the lead acid? And the answer is, this hasn't even moved. This is 200 cycles. It hasn't even moved. I mean, I can't argue that in the next cycle it explodes. I mean, there's no argument for that. I can't argue that. I can only say it's extremely highly unlikely that's going to happen. So this is going to go on for thousands of cycles. Thousands, not 200, but thousands. So if this is destroyed in 20 cycles, and this looks like it's going to be doing let's say 2,000, just, just for a figure, then the difference is phenomenal. Uh, this is the cheapest battery on the market if you're going through batteries. Now, if you're using this cheapy battery here and you are um, not letting it discharge so much, these figures will go way up. Um, but this is all about proportions. So if you're, say, a vehicle company, and you've been fitting these cheapy batteries and they've been lasting you for, say, for the sake of argument, three months or six months or whatever. This isn't about getting the exact cycles. This is just about saying, well, if those batteries are lasting you six months here, then if you switch to the AGM version, you probably get two years out of the same battery. Or if these batteries are only lasting you, say, a month or a month and a half or something, then you want them to last for maybe two years, then switch to lithium which basically, you put lithium in, you can forget about it. But there's no point wasting your money on lithium if you're, if you're operating these low-cost batteries with low-voltage sensitive relays, etc. on them to stop you going so low. They'll last you a lot longer than that. I mean, absolutely, this is a nasty curve. This is for people who would have, for example, say you had a van with an inverter on it. The guys will just run the inverter, put the kettle in, run the inverter till the battery stops working. I mean, that's, that's their cycle. They will do this, no problem at all. But if you have a large bank, battery bank on a boat and you're only dropping it down, say, 10, 15, 20%, then you will not get this curve. Absolutely will not. You'll get a, 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 you know, a decent thing. Um, you'll get maybe three, four years out of your battery. So as I would say to folk, you're better with a big battery bank and treating it easy than a little battery bank and caning the ass off it. But a lot of these um, batteries are just dropped until the inverter stops working. And that's what this cycle is. This is literally discharge the battery until the inverter stops working. That, that's this cycle. Not an unrealistic cycle, but that's this cycle. So, yes, lithium are a fraction of the cost if you're going into per cycle than any battery on the market. But as I say, if you don't want the uh, performance, then obviously don't waste your money. But this is a pro rata thing which will show you, you know, which battery type you should be using. Okay, um, thanks then.